It is such an honor and a privilege tonight to bring to this pulpit a man that I love because he is one of my very, very dearest friends. For 15 years, we've been walking together in ministry, several states apart. <laughs> but he asked me to come in the year 2000 to his church to his very first camp meeting. Now, he had never met me before. And I, last time I was there, he told his church the biggest mistake he ever made was bringing Doug Clanton in to preach camp meeting. But from the very, very first day that we met and visited and worshiped together, our souls were knit together in, in ministry and in friendship. And I'll tell you something, he's been through some things. And I've been through some things. And God has brought him into my life, into Nate's life, and into the life of RPA. And it is, go ahead and give him a hand. We love him. We love him. And do you know that there are not a whole lot of different faces behind this pulpit? And if you know me, you know why. It's because I don't really trust all that many people to stand at this pulpit and to preach the word to this generation of spiritual warriors of the last day church of Jesus. But this man is anointed and he gets us. He gets us. And I know God has spoken to him. So would you stand to honor the man of God tonight? Brother Stacy Fox, come and take your liberty. with my RPA family. So glad to be here. I tell you, I'm excited for this summer recharge. And you know, I, I tell you, you don't really need me. I, 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 it's a little intimidating. I'm among some of the very best preachers in the entire world and Brother Clinton. <laughs> being my last time here I'm gonna make it count we love you guys so much and I tell you um, back in the spring your uh, SWAT team came to Fort Worth and held our Southwest Youth Revival and I tell you what they tore it up in Fort Worth now, we like to have church. Don't get me wrong. We shout, we like to have church in Fort Worth. And they came in and our kids fell in love with them. Our youth, our, our grown people fell in love with the SWAT team. And you're just a part of us. That's just the way that is now. You're just a part of us. You, you made an impact. You made a difference. And, and I tell you, um, I... We joke because we're dear friends, but I tell you that comes from this leadership. This impact is the reason that you all are able to make an impact. And I appreciate this man. I appreciate Nate so much. You all are so dear to me. I love you. Just let's stand and be dismissed. <laughs> Are you ready for what God has for us tonight? Amen. I am too. I, I tell you, I had to make a trip to Louisiana last week. And so I drove about five and a half hours from Fort Worth down into Louisiana and attended a funeral for the father of a lady in our church. And um, 
when I was coming back, God began to speak to me about this revival. And I don't know about anybody else in here, but I have some of my best conversations with the Lord in the car. And I don't know if it's because of others, other drivers and that my salvation is on the line. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but nonetheless, God tends to speak very clearly to me in those times that I'm able to be alone in my car, which is not very often because I have a seven-year-old and I have a 20-year-old daughter and a husband and and family and grandkids. And so it's not often that I get a long time, especially in the car. But those times that I am, God begins to speak. And so I had that opportunity and I was driving home from Louisiana and, and I was praying about what God had for this revival weekend. This summer recharge, and this is what the Spirit of God began to speak to my heart for you tonight. This is recharge, and the re-indicating that you have already been charged. This is recharge. This is not charge-up time. This is recharge time. You've already been charged. You've already been charged to serve. You've already been charged to lead. You've already been charged to worship. You've already been charged to win the lost. You've already been charged with the power of the Holy Ghost. So as the Spirit of God began to speak to me about recharge... I began to think about this little device that is never too far from us. How many of you know that you have to recharge this? I began to think about our cell phones. None of us let our phones get too low. This is our lifeline, our email, our Facebook, every, we don't remember phone numbers anymore because we don't have to. If we had to use a pay phone, do they have those anymore? I just dated myself, didn't I? Just to tell any, any, well, you know, we used to use pay phones and stuff. But we wouldn't dare let this get too low. When our phones are about to die, we plug them in to charge them up again, to recharge them. So there are a few things that I want to point out through this train of thought for this first night of summer recharge. You've already been charged up. You are already an on fire kind of church. You as individuals already have a relationship with God and you've been sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But I know this, that sometimes our batteries begin to run a little low. Now, how many of you understand that if we let this die completely, you're disconnected for a little while. You got to let it sit on a charger for a little bit before there's enough power to bring it back online. Are you getting this tonight? Are you seeing the spiritual implications in this? That sometimes if we don't get plugged in when we're running a little low, God help us. If we find ourselves in time of crisis and our phone is dead. God help us if we find ourselves struggling or lost, confused, tempted, tried, under attack. And we've not been plugged in to the power source to keep us charged up. And ready for anything. There was a sister in my church many years ago that used to say all the time, Pastor, we got to be ready to preach, pray, or die. This summer recharge, we've got to plug into the power source because, church, you've got to be ready to preach, pray, or die. 
God, help us if someone around us is in need and we find ourselves dead and without power, without the ability to help them. In this summer recharge, we're going to plug into the power source, the power source. We're here to get charged once again. That we don't find ourselves in a situation without the power we need to make it through. The book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8 said this. And in this church, I'm sure you can quote this. (laughs) But you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Let me tell you something about this power of the Holy Ghost. Something you already know. Something you already know about this power source that we're about to plug into once again to recharge. You've used some of your power. you use some of the, the abilities. You've used some of, the, some of the gifts in your life. And now it's time to plug in once again to this power of the Holy Ghost. This power of the Holy Ghost is not just that by which we shout and bring down the walls in a good Holy Ghost service. But this power of the Holy Ghost was given for outside these four walls. Thank God we can feel the Holy Ghost. Thank God that we're moved to shout and moved in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. (coughs) Pardon me while I choke. (coughs) But does your life demonstrate the presence of the Holy Ghost every day? Does your life demonstrate the fruit of the Holy Ghost every day? Look, let me hang on. Wait. The fruit of the Holy Ghost is love, joy, peace. Now, if you are the opposite of any of those thus far, we might have a situation. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness. Mm -hmm. Goodness faithfulness gentleness here's the one that that can trip us up and self control this power of the Holy Ghost thank God we can feel it moving within us and thank God we can come together in a place of corporate worship and the power of the Holy Ghost begins to move and and we can feel the presence of an almighty God and, and we respond to that and we shout and we can be moved in the gifts of the Holy Ghost. But when I leave these four walls, what about my life then? See, because then it's when the fruit of the Holy Ghost kick in. See, because stand in Walmart sometime and shout. Come on. Uh, While you're at work sometime. Listen, we all have those people around us. Go on and shout just then. Speak in tongues right in their face. Right. We, we might not want to be those kind of Christians. But I do want the power of the Holy Ghost at work in my life that I can walk in love. That I can have joy. That I can have peace. That I can have patience. That I can control myself. What does your life demonstrate? In this summer recharge, we're going to plug in to this power source so that we can go the next steps, do the next things that God has for us. 
Let me read this to you. Ooh, good catch. Mark chapter 16 said this, and these signs will follow those who believe. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. At this time, if I could get someone to help me bring out the Kool-Aid and the snakes. And we're going to have revival. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not happening. But see, I want us to understand something tonight. In these revival services, I'm expecting a move of the Holy Ghost. I'm expecting to shout just a little bit. And if you know me, I don't shout just a little bit. I'm expecting that kind of move of the Holy Ghost. But then I'm expecting that when we leave these doors and go out into the world around us, that we'll begin to see people saved and set free from their sin, that we'll see people delivered, that we'll see people healed, that these signs and wonders will begin to follow after those who believe. It's important to know what the word believe actually means. The word believe means by your life. The way you live your life will demonstrate what you believe. He's either God or he's not. He's either God all the time or he's God none of the time. I would rather you be cold or hot instead of just lukewarm, riding some imaginary fence in this summer recharge. You've already been charged, but we're going to plug in one more time so that we can turn the city of Phoenix upside down. These signs and these wonders will follow after. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Because I've sent to you this power of the Holy Ghost. The things that we read about in this word, they're not dead. They're not just stories in history. But these are examples of things to come for our lives. What signs follow after you? Recharge. Plug into the power of the Holy Ghost. This power that will make you a witness. Not just a shouter. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Is your life a witness? I loved hearing the testimony tonight about Drew bringing somebody in that he works with and them giving their heart to the Lord. Thank God for that. Yes. That's what our lives should be like. Yes. Not that when I'm at work or around people of the world that I just blend in and look just like they do, but there should be something different about my life. Yes. Let me tell you something. Years ago, we thought the difference was all about the way we looked on the outside. I don't know about any of y'all, but some of those people that looked different were some of the most hateful, bitter, spiteful people. Maybe that was just in Odessa, Texas, where I grew up. <laughs> but they might have just been bitter about being in Odessa. I don't know. But, <clears throat> but nonetheless... It's not about the way we look out here. But it's about the way we look in here. And the word of God said that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever you're putting in you is going to come out. Are you going to recharge with this power of the Holy Ghost so that those things that are coming out of you 
are the gifts of the Holy Ghost, the fruit of the Holy Ghost, a demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost, these signs and wonders that are going to follow after you, these greater works. Are these the things demonstrated in our lives? Are you holy in church and around the saints, but when you're in private... Pastor, you might have an issue. It got real quiet. Just, just saying. But when we're in private, what does our life demonstrate then? Let me let you in on a little secret. Not many people know this. Um, so this is revelation for you, RPA. Be careful who you tell. But God can see you. <laughs> That's powerful knowledge. Use it wisely. God can see you. And if our life isn't lining up with the word of God in private... Don't expect that it will stay lined up in public very long. Ooh, recharge, church. When you're around the people of this world, can they tell that you're saved? Not by the clothes that you wear, not by your hairstyle, but by the way you act. By the way you talk. Can they tell that you've been in the presence of an almighty God? See, the word of God says, if the righteous, if the righteous are scarcely saved, if you, the church people, the saints are barely saved, barely holding it together, then where will the sinner and the ungodly stand? If we, who will spend these next three days in church, get to work on Monday and can barely hold ourselves together, yes, Lord, touch her right now, Jesus. Where? Are the sinners around you? Where are the ungodly around you supposed to turn for hope? When the crisis comes to your life, not if, but when. See, because the word of God said it rains on the just and the unjust alike. Sometimes life happens and sometimes life isn't good. Pastor, that's not a very positive message to be preaching tonight. It's a real message and you need to know how to deal with stuff when it comes along. When the crisis comes, do you fall apart at the seams and feel like throwing in the towel? Or does something begin to rise up within you? See, because my Bible tells me in the book of Isaiah chapter 59 that when the enemy comes in like a flood, then the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, will lift up a standard against him. Do you fall apart? Or when the enemy comes in like a flood, does something that power of the Holy Ghost begin to rise up on the inside of you. See, listen, if you've not been plugged into the power source, yes. when the crisis comes and you start trying to use this depleted tool, you might find yourself in trouble. But see, if we've been plugged in,
if we've been on our face before an almighty God, if I've been in the word of God, if I've been knocking at the door of heaven, if I've been seeking the face of God, when crisis comes my way, not if, but when crisis comes my way, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost rising up within me to overcome my circumstance. Church, this is summer recharge. This is not playtime. It's not just time to shout for a few services and then go on about our business as usual. But it's time to plug into our power source. No one in this house would dare let your phone die. And if it does, it doesn't matter where you are. You're looking for something to plug into. I was in the airport. People hovered all around one plug. Making sure they had enough juice. For the plane. (laughs) And yet. We don't seem to mind. If our churches die. We don't seem to mind. If my spirit dies. This. I can't live without it. This. I can take it or leave it. Church, if you wouldn't let that die, then don't let this die. And when you're feeling low, When you feel yourself running on empty, just like you would with this, find some place to get on your face before an almighty God and get plugged into the power source so that you've got the strength you need to go another mile. Church, don't just go through the motions. Get on your face and seek the face of this almighty God. Recharge me. Refill me. Let me tell you something about this kind of power of the Holy Ghost. I was reminded of a story in the Bible. Not just a fairy tale. But I'm reminded of some men of God in the word of God. Who had been in the presence of of Almighty God, who had been filled with the Holy Ghost. And one day they were on their way to church, minding their own business. And when they got to the church, there was a lame man sitting outside, begging, I need something from the people around me. I need something from these church people going into the house. Listen to me. All around us, there are lame men begging for something. And they need something from the church people. He had an expectation. But see what he didn't understand is on that day. He was about to encounter somebody. That had been plugged into the power source. Mm, You better get this. He was expecting them to meet a monetary need. But because. They had been in an upper room and filled with the Holy Ghost. 
because they had been plugged in to the power source. Because they had been charged up. When they saw him, Peter captured this man's attention. He said, look at me. Look at us. Listen, there are a lot of people sitting in the house of God. You don't want people looking at you. Especially don't look too close. <clears throat> I'm not talking about this church. That's another church somewhere else that I was talking about. <clears throat> but see, because they had been plugged into the power source. Because they were full of this Holy Ghost. That had given them power to be a witness. Peter said, look at us. I don't have any money. But I've got something better. I've got something that you need. Do you know Jesus as your personal savior and the pardon of your sin? What kind of church were you raised up in? What denomination are you? Sweetie, do you believe that Jesus can? Mm -mm. There was no back and forth conversation. Because they were charged up. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. See, when we get plugged in to this power source, it's not going to matter who they are, what they are, where they've come from. I've been in the presence of an almighty God. I don't have a lot to give you, but what I do have, let me share this with you. Let me share this Jesus with you. Get up and begin to walk. His life was changed. Second Timothy chapter one, verse six said this. Therefore, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. I'm not sure what I did. Oh, well. Let me remind you this is already something you know. This is already in your mind. So let me bring this back to your remembrance. Now, in this sentence, there's a grammatical understood. You stir up the gift of God. Listen. If you came to Summer Recharge and you're waiting for me to stir your gift. <laughs> you might be waiting a minute. Now, as the word said, I can lay my hands on you. I can be a catalyst for you to touch God but I can't stir your gift you stir up this gift of God that's inside you this is something that only you can decide for your life only you can decide to plug into the power source If you want your power to be depleted, okay. If you want the power to run out in the church, okay. Or in this summer recharge, regardless of how charged up I am, 
L listen, how many of us at the end of the day have ever looked at our phone and I've still got 70% of my battery life? Hmm. I'll take my chance and not plug that in tonight. No. Of course not. What are you, retarded? No, we don't do that. We plug in just in case. Just in case. So my phone doesn't run down. So you may be charged up. You may be on fire. You may be running on 90%, 99.9%. But in this summer recharge, why don't you go ahead and plug in just in case? Mm -mm -mm. See, you all are already a powerful group. But let me tell you something. God has something in store. That these four walls cannot contain. And if you hold all of this in here, you're doing that out there a disservice. So why don't we plug in just in case I run into somebody tomorrow that needs to know Jesus as their Savior? Wait a minute. Wait. Let me get you to somebody else. What if there's not time? What if there's not time? Well, why don't you come to church with me tonight? What if they didn't make it to church? Did you not have enough power to give them Jesus right where they are? Have you not been in the presence? Have you not been in the upper room? Have you not had a Holy Ghost experience that you could look at somebody that's lame, somebody that's dead in the water and say to them, I don't have much, but I got Jesus. Church, are you ready to plug in? Are you ready to recharge. Wow. Stand to your feet with me tonight. Father God, I come before you tonight in the name of Jesus. Father God, I'm so grateful for your word tonight. And Father, I pray tonight that as this word has been preached, Lord, that it will find fertile ground in which to grow. And Father God, that your word will have its perfect work in us. Father God, that we would be a people who receive this message of the Holy Ghost. Father God, that it would not only change my life, but Father, that there would be enough power in me to change the people around me. Father, what do you have in store for us? Father, what do you need to do in us? Lord, whatever you need of me, I'll make the sacrifice. Father, if there's something in me that's not pleasing to you, if there's a program running on this device that is not pleasing to you, Father, uninstall. Delete it. Father God, lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake, Jesus. Merciful, merciful Father. Father God, I know in this house there are those already all over this house who are full of the Holy Ghost. But Father, tonight our prayer is refill us, Lord. Refill us with the Holy Ghost just in case. Father, 
Ira la loro ma sotto tono lo ria passando dalla la 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 massa. Mari God, Mari God, Mari God. Mari God, Mari God, Mari God. Coria bossira la 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 ma sotto la 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 passaia. Yeah, lo 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 ma sora ria passata la 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 massaia. Ira lo 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 ma siri di riatta la 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 massaia. Come on plug in church. Come on plug in church. Plug in child of God. Recharge child of God. Coria bossia na na la 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 masaya ta la la give myself Church, these altars are open to you tonight. If you need to find a place to pray, turn around in your pews. Come around these altars tonight. Begin to seek the face of an almighty God. Maybe you're here tonight and you can say, Pastor, I'm willing to stir up this gift within me, but... I need somebody to stand in agreement with me. I need somebody to pray with me for strength. I need somebody to lay their hands on me. I don't mind touching God for myself, but I need somebody. If you're here tonight, make your way. Make your way to the front.